You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. This episode is brought to you by MissArtastic.com. If you're a teacher or art educator, you can find ideas, tips, advice, and art resources for art education at MissArtastic.com. Find the link in the description or go to MissArtastic.com now. to write with and something to write on or a device to record or type. I'm into the device typing on Google Docs or whatever because when I take notes, um, I can't read my notes after. <laughs> I like, I prefer to write instead of type on my phone, to be honest. But my writing is awful and it gets more awful as I'm in a rush. That's my why. But you do you, my lovely friend. And caregivers, we all want to provide our children with the best possible education and opportunities for growth. One way to support their development is by introducing them to the world of art and teaching them the elements of art at home. Whether your child is a budding Picasso or just loves to doodle, exploring the seven elements of art can really help them develop important skills like creativity, problem solving, and self-expression. In this ultimate guide to teaching the elements of art to kids at home, we're going to be covering everything you need to know to get started from understanding the importance of teaching art to children to exploring different techniques and strategies. And this guide is packed with information that's going to help you nurture your child's artistic side. So you're going to be learning, you'll learn how to create a space for, uh, for art, but a space for art in your home gather the right materials and supplies, and then set goals and expectations that's going to really motivate your child to explore their creativity. We're also going to cover hands-on activities and projects for each of the elements of art, from line and shape to color and texture. Plus, we'll also share tips for engaging kids of all ages and skill levels, adjusting activities for different learning styles and troubleshooting common challenges like frustration and mistakes. By the end of this guide, you will have all the tools and resources that you need to support your child's artistic journey and then help them help them develop a lifelong love of art. All right, so benefits of teaching art at home. So teaching art at home can offer a wealth of benefits for children and their caregivers. First and foremost, it provides an opportunity for self-expression and creativity. Art can be a powerful tool for processing emotions, feeling, expressing feelings, and exploring new ideas and perspectives. For children who may struggle to express themselves verbally, uh, art can be a particularly valuable outlet. In addition to fostering creativity, Teaching art at home can also help develop critical thinking and problem solving skills. Art often requires experimentation, planning, and the ability to adapt and revise as needed. By encouraging children to explore different materials and techniques, you can help them develop a growth mindset and a willingness to take risks and try new things. Teaching art at home can also provide a fun and engaging way to learn about other subjects. For example, exploring the principles of color theory can help children understand concepts of in science while learning about patterns and shapes can help them with math skills. By integrating art into other areas of learning, you can help reinforce important concepts, make learning more enjoyable and engaging. Finally, teaching art at home can be a wonderful bonding experience for parents and care children. By working on projects together um, or working through processes or exploring and ex experimenting together, you can really create valuable, important, special memories and strengthen your relationship and have that quality family time while also providing 
valuable opportunities for learning and growth. So the importance of teaching the elements of art to kids. So teaching the elements of art to kids is really crucial for their artistic and creative development. The seven elements of art are line, shape, form, value, space, texture, and color. And they provide the foundation for all visual art. By understanding and applying these elements, children can create more dynamic and compelling works of art. To begin, line is the most basic and fundamental element of art. It is the path of a moving point, and it can really convey the idea of motion and movement and texture. An excellent hands-on art I lesson idea for kids is to have kids use black paint to create an abstract design using various types of lines straight, curvy, zigzag, etc. If you want a bit more color and contrast, you can have them just free play with colors first um, and then take the ones that dry, take your black and make your marks. So again, straight, curvy, zigzag, all the things. Next, shape refers to the flat enclosed area that defines the edges of an object or form. A simple shape or lesson is to have children draw a still life with geometric shapes such as squares, triangles, and then circles. They can use bright colors and patterns to fill in the shapes and create lively dynamic compositions. Form is a three-dimensional shape and can be a bit more challenging to teach. A fun activity is to use clay, whether ceramic or air-dry clay, um, and to make a sculpture, right? Or you, if you don't have access to that, just use paper to make paper sculptures or cardboard, like from a recycling bin or just recycled materials, bring them in. See what happens, and I love doing that. And if you don't wanna make big things, if you don't have a lot of time, just make like mini, mini sculptures. I did that in high, when I taught high school. Um, I would have, you know, start off sculpture with just recycled materials and challenge them to create a sculpture, a miniature sculpture um, using just recyclable materials. It really, really challenges kids to get creative, but also, you know, be sustainable. I think that's important too. So children can really use their imagination and creativity to create a 3D object, um, exploring different forms and shapes as they work. Value is the range of lightness and darkness in a work of art. A great value lesson is to use pencil to create a shading drawing of an object. Children can use different pencil weights to create or just the, the firm, how um, soft or firmly they press if they only have one type of pencil. A pencil weight is like a 2B versus an HB versus a 6B, which is very soft material, so it's very dark. Um, so that kind of controls it that way, but you can also control it by, by how hard or soft you press, and you can do that with crayons too. Keep that in mind, right? When you're teaching littles or you're making with littles. Um, so different, again, different pencil weights or that um, to create various shades and then also learn how to control the light and shadow. Space is the area in, around, and in between, you can teach it like that too, right? In, around, in between a work of art. A fun space art lesson idea is to create a landscape painting, teaching kids to create the illusion of depth and distance using techniques such as overlapping, size variation, atmospheric perspective. And if a landscape of mountains and trees is boring, make it a space animal landscape or like underwater castle landscape. I don't know, make something up, like man landscape on Mars. What would that look like? Get, if they love dinosaurs, make it a prehistoric landscape. Integrate their interests, just like that. So texture is the way a surface looks or feels. A hands-on texture activity is to use various materials such as sandpaper, cotton balls, and fabric to create um, a mixed media collage. Children can explore different textures and combine them to make a texture sandwich, just kidding, but to also create a visually interesting piece or a texture sandwich. Lastly, color is the most exciting element of art. It is essential to teach children about primary and secondary colors and how to mix them to make tertiary colors, such as, well, I'm almost there, red violet, blue violet, right? Those are tertiary, right? I have my, my primary color in front of the secondary name. Yellow green, blue green, red orange, yellow orange. 
Those are all tertiaries, right? It has a hyphenated name. Um, a fun color activity is to have kids create a color wheel using paint and exploring different hues and values and how they relate to one another. Um, in conclusion, teaching the seven elements of art to kids is essential for their artistic growth and development. By providing hands-on art lessons that allow children to explore and experiment with different materials and techniques, you can help them develop their artistic skills while also fostering their creativity and imagination. So creating a space for art, I said I've been talking about it and now it's time to talk about it. So when it comes to teaching the elements of art to kids at home, it's really important to create a dedicated space for art making. And this not only helps keep supplies um, organized, but also provides an environment that encourages creativity and self-expression. <laughs> Sorry, pardon me. Whether you have a separate room or just a corner of a table, creating a space for art, or even the floor, um, creating space for art can make all the difference in fostering a love of art in children. One key aspect of creating a space for art at home is having the right supplies. It is a good idea to have a variety of materials on hand, such as wax crayons, paint. I like specifically like watercolor paints because it lasts a long time. Markers, your colored pencils or pencil crayons, uh, and paper, so that children can explore different mediums and techniques. Organizing the supplies in bins or drawers can also make it easier for children to find what they need and clean up when they're finished. I highly recommend just grabbing a spray bottle from the dollar store, put a few drops few only oh my goodness you do not need bubbles guys a few drops of one two three drops of like palm olive or dawn whatever dish soap whatever even get some dollar store dish soap probably even have it there palm olive there for a dollar <laughs> for real i think that it's a great great source right grab some dish soap put it in the bottle then fill it with water so that way it's safe no matter what surface a kid sprays it on right if you give them some chemicals we don't a one touching your skin and b we don't want that on our furniture <laughs> Dish soap is safer <laughs> for our stuff and everybody and that's just nice. And just a few drops and then put that spray bottle with like a microfiber cloth in their art cleanup area and make them responsible for cleanup. Just spray, wipe, rinse your rag and let it dry. That's it and then put it back in there so that way they can take some ownership of the, of the cleaning process, right? Um, another important aspect of creating an art space is making it comfortable and inviting to be a place to be. So consider adding com some comfortable seating, some good lighting and decor that inspire creativity, such as posters, posters of famous artists or artworks. Uh, you might also want to play music or have a designated quiet time during art making uh, to help children get into the creative mindset. I love playlists like jazz cafe music or I like also like Zen, Zen vibes or like lo-fi beats. You can find them on like Spotify or like Apple or YouTube and all that. Yeah, you can find it all, all everywhere nowadays. So use whatever you like to use. It's your, <laughs> you do you. It's my favorite phrase, you do you. But today you're gonna just help them get in that creative mindset and like focus on the task. But ultimately creating a dedicated art space in your home shows, ch your, shows kids that you value and prioritize their creative expression. It also provides them with a safe and comfortable place to explore their own ideas and develop their artistic skills. Next is understanding the elements of art. So teaching kids about the elements of art is a fundamental part of uh, developing their artistic abilities. The elements of art are the basic building blocks of art making and include line, shape, form, value, color, texture, and space. By understanding and utilizing these elements, kids can really create visually engaging and meaningful artworks. Line is the most basic element of the elements of art and refers to a mark made on a surface made by a moving point. Line can be either thin or thick, straight or curved, and can vary in length and direction. Shapes, on the other hand, are defined as flat areas enclosed by lines. Uh, shapes can be geometric, like squares or circles, or organic, like shapes found in nature. A uh, form refers to three-dimensional aspect of art, such as sculptures or pottery, where it's implied in a painting, right, of something like a vase that looks like it has three dimensions, even though it's a flat surface. Color is perhaps the most known 
uh, well-known elements of art and refers to the hue, saturation, and brightness to, of all different colors. Texture is the way a surface feels or appears to feel and space refers to the illusion of depth in a two-dimensional artwork. Teaching children about the elements of art can be done through a variety of activities and lessons. For example, you could have children experiment with different types of lines by drawing with different uh, tools such as pencils, markers, or paintbrushes. And then creating collages with different shapes can help children understand how shapes work together uh, to create larger compositions. Hands-on activities such as creating sculptures or exploring different textures with sensory materials can help children understand the concept of form and texture. Additionally, uh, introducing children to the color wheel and experimenting with mixing colors can help them understand the properties of color. <clears throat> and by teaching children about the elements of art in a hands-on and engaging way, you can really help them develop and a foundation for their artistic abilities that can build upon that they can build upon throughout their lives. So some strategies for teaching the elements of art. So teaching the elements of art to children can really seem overwhelming at first, but there are many strategies that can make the process easier and more effective. One effective strategy is to introduce each element of art one at a time, allowing children to fully understand and explore each concept before moving on to the next. For example, you could spend a week focusing on the elements of art and then move on to um, shape the following week. This allows children to fully grasp each concept and then build upon their understanding as they learn more. Another strategy is to incorporate the elements of art into subjects uh, such as science or history. And for example, you could use the elements of art to teach, of art line, to teach children about uh, the history of calligraphy or the science of anatomy. By connecting art to other subjects, children can really see the practical applications of what they are learning and gain a deeper appreciation for the subject. In addition to these strategies, it's important to provide children with opportunities for hands-on exploration and experimentation, giving children access to a variety of art materials such as clays, uh, and paints and collage materials allows them to explore the elements of art in a tangible way and develop their own artistic style. One final strategy is to provide children with opportunities to share their artwork with others. This could be through displaying their artworks in the home or classroom, participating in shows or exhibitions, or even sharing their artwork with friends and family. By giving kids the opportunity to share their creations with others, they can really gain that confidence in their artistic abilities and develop a deeper sense of pride in their work. So troubleshooting some common challenges. So teaching the elements of art to kids can really come with its own set of challenges. So here are some common challenges that may arise and some strategies for overcoming them. One is a lack of interest, right? Some kids might not be really showing um, interest into making art initially. So to spark their interest, you can try introducing some art materials that are exciting to them, like metallic paints or metallic oil pastels um, or glitter crayons, if that even still exists. <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing from the 90s, <laughs> but it might exist. <laughs> um, uh, you can also try like uh, connecting to other, uh, connecting art to other subjects that the kid is interested in, such as animals or sports. Uh, number two is frustration with mistakes. So mistakes are natural, are really a natural part of making art. Uh, I make mistakes all the time in my own art practice. I'm in my studio, so like that half is like all my art studio. Guys, I make mistakes as a professional artist all the time. It happens. Blah. It's life. <laughs> but sometimes it can just frustrate or discourage kids and that's really upsetting, right? When they make a mistake. So really encourage children to view mistakes as opportunities for growth and learning and emphasize that there's really no right or wrong way to create art. And it's really about the process more than the final product. It's about the whole learning process. Number three is difficulty with certain some concepts. So some kids may struggle with certain elements of art such as color theory or perspective. If a child is struggling with a particular concept, try breaking it down 
into smaller parts and then providing extra guidance or support in those areas. You can also try incorporating the concept into a fun and engaging art activity. Number four is limited access to materials. So not all families may have access to a wide array of materials. Uh, to overcome this challenge, just try using some everyday materials such as like your cardboard, um, boxes, newspaper or paper towel rolls. I love using recyclables. Also, it teaches sustainability and reuse, repurpose, recycle concepts. So that's also why I like to do it. Plus, it really asks kids to be more creative in their adventures. You can also check with your local community center or art stores for free or low cost materials. Number five is time constraints. With busy schedules, it can really be challenging to find time for art activities. So try incorporating art into other activities such as incorporating art into homework assignments uh, or setting aside a designated art time each week. You could also try shorter, more focused activities that can be completed in a shorter amount of time. By anticipating and addressing these common challenges, you can create a positive and successful learning experience for kids as they explore the elements of art. Of course, if you're wanting to find some fully planned art units you, that really explore the elements of art through a theme and that are very grade specific for kids, you can find fully planned art units at the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers store by going to Ms., uh, teacherspayteachers.com and searching Ms. Artastic in the search bar. In conclusion, teaching the elements of art to kids at home can be a fun and rewarding experience for both children and parents by creating a space for art and understanding the elements of art and implementing simple techniques and strategies and troubleshooting common challenges parents can provide a well-rounded art education for children. Through the process of creating art, children can develop important skills such as creativity, problem solving, self-expression, and critical thinking. Moreover, connecting the elements of art to other subjects can help children understand and appreciate the world around them. By teaching the elements of art to kids at home, parents can inspire their children to explore their creativity and develop a lifelong love for art. Well, my friend, that's it for this episode, and I will see you in the next.